Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking a look at the B Wines F7 GB2. It is a 4K camera, 3 axis gimbal, 3 kilometer control distance, 3 kilometer Wi-Fi FPV transmission distance, GPS RC quadcopter ready to fly. So it has the 1806 brushless motors with the six inch bi-bladed props. It's got the foldable arms, the rear arms fold in, the front arms flip in and flip out. It's got the large CMOS sensor 4K camera on a three axis gimbal with the built-in DVR. It supports from a 32 gigabyte to a 128 gigabyte micro SD card and it is 0 to 90 degrees remote tilt adjustable. The camera can be removed just like that and the landing layers can be removed as well. Now there are two LED lights in the front, one on each arm and there are placeholders, but no optical flow sensor camera and no LED lights. There is a single status LED light in the rear and the battery bay is in the rear. The battery is a 11.1 volt, 2,600 milliamp size battery. It is said to be good for about 25 minutes of flight time. It'll take roughly about six and a half hours to fully charge up the battery via the USB-C port using the provided charge cable. Long press the power button to power up and check the remaining charge left in the battery and long press the power button to power off. And that is exactly how the quadcopter will power on and off as well. Slide the battery back in and it'll click into place. Put the landing legs back on. Put the camera back in. And it is ready to go. The remote controller has the flip out 
spring-loaded phone holder. Also has the flip-out antennas. And these antennas are the real thing. They are both functioning antennas. We also have the flip-out hand grips, which feels good in the hands. We have the camera zoom dial and the photo button on the left shoulder. And we have the camera tilt dial and the dedicated video button on the right shoulder. We have the speed changing button. Speeds one, two, and three can be had with a short press. And it also serves as a GPS on and off button with a long press. We have the emergency stop button. We have the power push button on and off switch. And we have the return to home button. Now both sticks to the top and in will initiate the compass calibration and both sticks to the top and out will calibrate the gyros of the quadcopter and both sticks to the bottom and in will arm and disarm the motors of the quadcopter. Charge up the built-in 3.7 volt 1500 milliamp battery via the USB-C port with the provided USB-C to USB cable. It is said to be good for about two hours of runtime. So as you can see by now, the B Wines F7GB2 is identical to the SJRC's F74K Pro. And it is. It also has the enhanced video transmission or the relay transmission technology built in to give it the uninterrupted three kilometers Wi-Fi FPV video on your phone or device and also the three kilometer in control distance as well. All you need is a nice place to fly. All right, so this looks like a nice place to fly. So let's get it going. Let's go ahead and power up the quadcopter. And power up the remote control. Now it takes about 20 to 40 seconds before it binds with the remote controller. So what it is doing now, the quadcopter is binding with the remote controller. And then after it has done so, then you are able to bind to your phone app. And in my case, I'm going to be using my iPad. So don't freak out if the Wi-Fi network doesn't appear on your phone or your device that you are using before these two are paired. So we're going to see the right bar go up and it's still trying to connect. So let's wait and there you go. It is connected and now I am able to connect to the Wi-Fi network and look at that. It has connected automatically. B1 F7 Wi-Fi network and here is the app. It is called the B Wine Drone app, free downloadable app in the App Store. So go ahead and check it out. I'm going to click on it. And this is how it looks like. Three, two, one, boom. And there you go. Make sure you choose the F7 GB2 on the drop down. And I'm going to go directly into the controls. And it is telling me to calibrate the compass and it has voice prompts too so let me increase my volume so both sticks to the top and in okay so it is telling me to rotate it horizontally and it has done so now rotate it vertically another beep so listen for the beep as well and we are done calibrating the compass now you can calibrate the gyro, so both sticks to the top and out. And there you go, it shows on the app as well. So we have completed our calibration process, both of the compass calibration and the gyro calibration. So we are good to go. And let's see how many satellites we have acquired. Mm, looks like five. Oops. No, that's the degrees. Uh, this doesn't quite tell you that, does it? Okay, so let's go ahead and wait. I believe the LED lights are supposed to be solid, and they look like it's solid. So let's see if I can arm the motors. 
there you go I can arm the motors that means all of the GPS has been acquired but on the app I don't see anything that has GPS except bars signal and the battery so it doesn't quite tell you if it is ready to go I think earlier it did say GPS mode all right but if you don't have all of the G necessary GPS acquired you can long press the speed control button and turn the GPS off and you can fly without GPS but we are ready to go so let's go ahead and check this thing out camera tilt all the way down to 90 degrees and all the way up to horizon it's got the three axis gimbal and I do believe I still have that plastic film on my camera so let me take that off yeah don't want that stuck on there there we go all right there we go taking it off I want to put it on my iPad all right so let's take a look at the three axis gimbal and looks like the gimbal is crooked now it's straight there you go now it's working okay it says ready to fly and there's some kind of voice prompt and check it out look at how steady the video is a little pitch three axis gimbal so it has a yaw factor too it kind of smoothly follows the quadcopter once the quadcopter has yawed and from my experience flying the SJRC F7 this thing has very good yaw control as well on the gimbal very nimble and very quick all right so let's take some photos and from experience this will take a while see what I'm saying it takes a while to download the photo to the app but it does a pretty good job at it all right let's make our rounds take a few photos before we take off all right All right, so we've taken some photos. Now let's go ahead and take some videos. I'm gonna switch over to the video mode and hit the video icon. I have a 32 gigabyte micro SD card formatted, so it is counting down. So before you do anything, you wanna hit that three dot on the top right corner. And we are in beginner mode. And beginner mode, the maximum is 30 meters. And flight altitude, maximum is 30 meters and everything is just set so you want to change that I want to turn it off and I'm going to turn off beginner mode and I'm going to increase my distance all the way to 3,000 meters and the height as well the maximum height is 120 meters and I'm going to re leave the return altitude at 20 meters and I'm going to hit save and it says sec successfully all right so this quadcopter has GPS tracking so if you lose this quadcopter somewhere, it will show up in the track and you can go ahead and use the tracking and you can also uh, track it via the uh, Google Maps. It will show Google Maps exactly where it is and exactly where you are so you can go and look for it. And you can also adjust the gimbal and change the metric to standard. Let me get out, all right now let's see here am I taking a video because once I went into the settings I think it stopped taking a video and on my remote control as well so I'm gonna hit the dedicated video button on the remote there you go now it is taking a video so once you're going through the settings I'm assuming your video stops all right so I'm gonna go ahead and leave the iPad right here on this table 
and we will come back to it so let's go ahead and check this thing out so bolt sticks to the bottom and in arms the motors there you go and I'm going to go ahead and manually take off letting go of the sticks GPS position hold very nice yawing in one spot yep yaws in position very nice all right get it angry okay goes right back to where it was so very nice let's see what speed we are in okay speed number one now it has three speeds full pitch full yaw yeah looks like it's got the same flying characteristics as the SJRC F7 very nice and smooth okay speed number two there you go a little bit more pitch basically the yaw speed hasn't changed very nice controls plateaus off speed number three okay looks like the yaw has gotten a lot tighter yes yaw has gotten tighter so there you go speeds one two and three plateaus off well you won't be able to see that in the video because of the three axis gimbal and there we go let's see plateaus off yeah nice it is a little bit noisy and letting go of the sticks comes to a hover very nice all right, let's check out the camera tilt. I'm gonna bring it this side here. All right, there we go. Okay, camera tilt down. Using the remote to tilt the camera all the way down to zero degrees or 90 degrees and all the way up to zero degrees up horizon hey not bad can it go higher it seems like that is about the highest it'll go now you can also let's see here on the phone app you can also do that as well and let's see here you can do that with the bar on the right by tapping on the plus and the minus it goes a little bit smoother so that is tilting capability of the camera remote tilt via the app as well as the hard remote and we can also zoom in whoops I stopped the video sorry guys I'm gonna restart the video there we go and let me yaw a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in with the dial you can only intermittently zoom in and that is with the hard remote now you can also zoom in with the phone app and you can zoom in a little bit smoother than you can with the phone app all right so there you go zoom and let's see i'm gonna go back down to speed number one and 
camera up, tilt all the way up and go for a little cruise. See how smooth the video is with the three axis gimbal plus the electronic image stabilization. And mind you, this quadcopter has the enhanced video technology or the relay technology, whichever one you want to call it, like a repeater. So it'll go three kilometers in control distance. And the Wi-Fi video transmission distance is also 3,000 meters. So this thing can go the distance. Yes, it can. Looks like there's a car over there. And Wi-Fi FPV is right on As you let go of the sticks, it stops immediately. Yeah, this thing is nice. If you want a nice Wi-Fi FPV quark up, this is nice. I mean, uh, whoa. What's with all the birds? There's a car passing by, and all the birds are following it. <laughs> you guys see that? Holy shit. <laughs> I don't want to hit any of those birds okay so let's go ahead and bring it back here yeah so if you want a nice Wi-Fi FPV quadcopter this one and the SJRCF7 of course is the exact duplicate of this uh, just a different brand name uh, the SJRC uh, F11 S 4k Pro the Ruko F11 uh, 4k Pro GIM 2 I believe it's called and the Holystone HS600. Those are the good ones that'll go 3,000 meters. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and land it. And I am physically landing it and it's very slow coming down so you can control its path. So that is really nice. It doesn't just come straight down like really quick. So you can adjust what you're gonna land and hovers there for a little bit touches down and the motors turn off nice let me go ahead and place it right in the middle here all right so yep you guessed it we're gonna check out the return home but i'm going to go ahead and take off via the app here you go slide the button to the right and there you go automatically takes off but you have to arm the motors first okay so let's take it out right about here and let go of the sticks it comes to a hover and I'm gonna hit the return to home button oh turns around first and it heads on its way back it, does, it didn't go up to the 20 meter altitude and it stopped close to the takeoff spot and it's mosing its way over there turns around and slowly descends and it stops and then now it slowly descends let's see where it's going to land slightly off very gently lands itself slightly off the center of the landing pad but that is still awesome very nice now let's go ahead and arm it once again manually take off and this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna retake control as it is coming back okay let go of the sticks comes to a hover now hitting the re uh, return to home now this thing doesn't have any sensors so be careful when you do the return to home it will just come back so if you have anything blocking its way um, make sure that you are clear return home uh -uh. return to home once again there you go turning around 
and heads its way back. So again, it did not go up to the uh, 20 meters in height. It put the brakes on and it slowly meanders its way above the landing pad where it took off from. Turns around again and starts to descend and puts on its brakes as it says descending and looks like it's going to miss the center of the landing pad again by more this time. Slows down, gently touches down and the motors turn off. Wow, pretty nice. Okay, so this thing has a relay connection. So as you saw earlier, I was telling you quadcopter binds and pairs with the remote control first and then the remote control pairs with the device the Wi-Fi phone app so I cannot turn this thing off it's going to disconnect the phone as well or your device so everything is going to be disconnected so usually I test out the fail safe return home by turning off the remote control well I can do that but I will have to restart the whole process again so I'm not going to show you guys that all right so forgive me if I don't whoop, perform the fail-safe return home on this quadcopter. But I will, however, do a mini distance test. So let's go and check it out. Let's head on this way and see if I can go all the way to the homes over there. And let's see how good the Wi-Fi video feed is as well. And look at that. It's going, I'm going to make a left turn so my car is not blocking the transmission. All right, so pushing it and let's see. It is showing me 100 meters now. But that seems like it's a lot <laughs> farther than 100 meters though. Okay. Continuing to push it. I'm going to go up in altitude just a little bit. There you go. That should be pretty good there. And I'm going to continue to push it. The quadcopter is showing 25% battery life. Wow, the battery is dying off pretty fast. It should have about 25 minutes of flight time. But I'm going to continue to push it and let's see what happens. Either I'm going to reach the homes safely, which is about a thousand meters. So I'm not going to do the whole three kilometer distance check on this one right now. I'm just going to go and see if it can reach those homes and we have 100% control and 100% FPV video. Look at that. So far, no disturbance at all. Pretty nice, huh? I can't see it anymore. But it is continuing to go and I'm continuing to push it. I'm getting pretty close to those homes now. Making good progress. I think I see it. I think I see a tiny little dot. Yeah, I think I see it now. I know exactly where it is. And it is continuing to go. And it's telling me it's 500 meters. And I see a car driving on that dirt road. Good video transmission. Like I say, if you want a nice Wi-Fi FPV quadcopter, these are it. The four quadcopters that I mentioned earlier. The F7 SJRC, F11S Pro 4K, the GIM2 by Ruko and holy stone hs 600 look at that i'm continuing to push it and it is continuing to go towards the homes no interrupted video no interrupted control as well so just an awesome quadcopter for distance so you know if you're flying within oh drone low voltage kicked in so we are in first phase of low voltage and the quadcopter is heading back all right let's see what it does 
So it should come back home and provide me enough time to fool around some more and then uh, within a geofence and then the second phase of the critical low voltage kicks in. Usually that is the case. Okay, I think I see myself there in the middle of the field. Yeah, that's me right there. So it's heading back straight and it is boogieing. Very nice. Right guys, there I am. It is coming back. And the remote control is beeping. Single beeps. And I can see it and I can hear it coming back. And there it is. Okay, let's see what it does. Turns around a little bit. And I do not think it's going to land anytime soon. Yep. It is allowing me to retake control of it and decide what I want to do. So it is not landing. So what I'm going to do is retake control of it and I am able to retake control of it. I want to bring it down in a circular pattern. Throttling down and yawing. Okay, now three beeps. So. Okay, three beeps are heard. So are we still in the low voltage first phase? Okay, it says low voltage now. But it is not thinking about coming down yet. So let's see here. Is there geofencing? There you go. There's a geofencing. It bounced off probably about 25 meters. I believe that is the geofencing of this quadcopter. So let's see once again. Boom. There you go geofencing so if you are at this stage you should be landing your quadcopter so you don't want to deplete the battery more than what it is right now to safely keep your battery with a healthy status but this is a test so I'm just going to fly around right here to see what happens when it hits the critical low voltage phase. So let's go back and forth. And see what happens. And I can hear the app continuing to say drone low voltage. But it is not thinking about coming down. So definitely you can't really do much within the geofencing area. So yeah, definitely go ahead and land your quadcopter. I believe what it will do is just come down wherever it is okay I heard all kinds of voice prompt coming from the phone app but I'm still able to fly it Drone low voltage, it says. 
Now this one does come with two batteries. So you got an extra battery to do other stuff if one battery is not enough for you. So that is really nice. So I do recommend if you are going to purchase this quadcopter or any other quadcopter, get the one that comes with multiple batteries because if you buy the batteries separately, it is quite expensive. But when it comes with the combo, like a double battery pack or triple battery pack, the batteries are less expensive than, than if you were to purchase it separately. So do yourself a favor, don't buy the one with a single battery. You will be glad you did. Okay, I'm still flying around. And it has great video. The three axis gimbal and the electronic image stabilization is just right on on this one. The only thing negative I can say about this quadcopter is the fact that it records in the 15 frames per second versus uh, like a 30 frames per second like its counterpart brothers like the F11S, the Ruko Gim 2, the HS6, yeah, they all have 30 frames per second, but this one, for some reason, maybe due to chip shortage or something, it has 15 frames per second, which makes the video kind of, you know, jerky at times. Not a smooth transition video. Man, the first phase to the second phase of low voltage is quite long. So, there's a lot of battery life in this period. I wish they made it so we can set when the low voltage kicks in. So we can bring it in whenever we think, oh, I think it is about to land. Yeah, it is about to land and I have no pitch or roll control. And it is coming down. Looks like it's going to miss the landing pad. I don't want it hit, hitting the table. So I'm just going to let it come down. Move the table out of the way. And it is gradually coming down by itself. And it gently touches down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. A little jerk. And then the motors turn off. Nice. Alright guys, so here we go. I got the other battery installed and I have my phone hooked up to it this time. So we're going to check out the circle me function. So let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, you can set the distance. So I'm going to go about 20 meters or so. And slide to commence and it just goes away from you automatically I got a little bit of a toilet bowl activity this time turns around and it is starting to do the circle me nice let's see how smooth it is well my phone is kind of stuttering a little bit but hopefully the video comes out nice and smooth okay so while you are doing the circle me feature you can go ahead and throttle up to increase the height or altitude and you can throttle down to decrease the height or the altitude which is pretty nice and with the pitch and roll if you roll in the direction where it is going it is continuing to go but if you reverse the roll it will start going the opposite direction so you can control its direction by the roll command and you can also control the radius by the pitch command so if you pull on the pitch it will come towards you and if you push on the pitch it'll go away from you to make the radius bigger which is pretty cool so you can 
push it away and throttle up at the same time to give it that spiral look very nice I'll pull it in a little bit so unlike the F11 Pro 4k if you pitch and roll it kind of gets out of the circle me feature but this one has functions on the pitch and roll stick so to get out from the circle me you just tap on that icon and it gets you out let me try that again it gets you out <laughs> okay come on now uh, it does not want to work guys I am forever stuck in the circle me function Okay, let's tap on something else and see. All right, zoom. I can go ahead and zoom in while it's circling and zoom out while it's circling. Pretty cool. Okay, please let me out. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. I wish there was a manual way to get out but I am unable to get out guys <laughs> my phone app does not want to work <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and do it the old-fashioned way I'm gonna stop recording and all that and I'm gonna kill the phone app oh I got out finally I got out nice there we go <laughs> okay camera tilt down and let's check out the GPS follow me which one is GPS okay here we go GPS follow me okay it has locked into my position but it is slightly off because my phone is probably showing that I'm over here instead of over here okay so let's go ahead and take a walk on the wild side and see if it does follow you all right yep looks like it is following me and it's doing a pretty good job of following me but i'm kind of off centered this is a nice big field right here now why didn't i situate myself here instead of over there oh big old ant hole and check it out as i'm going towards it it did reverse slowly there you go it reversed all right still following yeah still following way off center though so it is not immediate it kind of has to readjust now I'm on the right side instead of on the left side so it all depends on how good your phone's GPS is. So I'm just kind of off centered again. So as I'm coming into the frame here, <laughs> hey, it is still staying right there. And looks like it is trying to follow me but it has lost my gps coordinates oh there you go it got it back and it's following me once again all right so it does work but it all depends on your gps coordinates on your device how good your phone is or your device is so it will follow you it is following the phone and it is not following the remote control so it lost me again so the accuracy of your GPS on your device greatly influences what happens and looks like I have lost my app control all right guys so that is circle me and that is follow me on the B wine 
F7. So my iPad had zero issues with the connectivity, but my phone gave me a bit of trouble as you saw. Not to blame the quadcopter and its Wi-Fi connectivity, but rather my phone. Now the SJRC F7, which is identical to this quadcopter, also gave me trouble with my phone, but it has zero issues with my iPad as well. So it all depends on the device that is used. So if you are having issues with your phone or device, try using another device. So all in all, the Beeline F7 is an awesome GPS drone. It is a sporty flyer. The video is nice and stable with its electronic image stabilization and the three axis gimbal and the Wi-Fi FPV flying is especially super fun. Now, the only negative thing about this quadcopter is that although the video recording is in 4K, it is in 15 frames per second. It would have been nice to have an alternative choice like 1080p but in 30 frames per second. So that'll do it then for this video of the B Wines F7 GB2. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Have a great day and we'll see you again next time.